What's the one thing that kept you going? That's the question Good Morning Britain asked former sub-postmaster Alan Bates after his appearance at the post office inquiry for the first time yesterday. And his answer was his partner, Suzanne, who's been by his side throughout the ordeal. Now, you definitely remember that she was played brilliantly by Julie Hesmanhaus in Mr Bates versus the Post Office, uh, who says the drama not only cut through to the heart of the issue, but also joined um, and showed off, really, didn't it, Julie, the supportive role Suzanne has played in the fight for justice. Let's have a quick look. I just want to be able to take you on holiday again, Suzanne. A. Hey, the post office has taken all our money. B. My knees are way too old for Snowden now. And C. You can't possibly go on holiday. Too busy campaigning morning, noon and night. Well, Julie has been how she joins us. It's so lovely to see you. It feels like an so age. It's been sat on it so I know, I know, it's so lovely to be here. And mm. it's such a huge, uh, it's such a, I mean, you've always done big roles, groundbreaking roles that have told fantastic stories, you know, on Corrie as well. Um, but this one seems to epitomise how sometimes drama can mm. do what other things, other sorts of, you know, broadcasting or whatever, can't, didn't it? What did you know about it when the role was offered to you? Well, I think I knew what most people knew, which mm. was bits and bobs. Mm. You know, I'd, I'd followed it sort of scrappily over the years. I mean, we all said, and Toby Jones included, that we felt a bit guilty that we didn't know more about it. When we got yeah. offered the role, obviously, we went more deeply into it then. And, yeah. and it's just shock upon shock about how long it went on for... Mm and how badly people were treated, that the level of lies and corruption that were going on behind the scenes, which of course is all coming out now, you know, to the max. But I think that part of the problem was that it had gone on for such a long time. And so there'd been yeah. brilliant journalism around it. Of, yeah. of course there had, and the podcasts that had been mm. on Radio mm. 4. But I think that a drama can just cut to the heart mm. of things, absolutely. Did you know that. it would? Well, we hoped it would. I mean, I've never been to a read-through of a drama before where the producer's been in tears. Everybody wow. was so passionate about telling the story and telling it well. But people don't watch telly in that way anymore. We didn't expect those kind of mm -hmm. figures. It got a good slot in the new year, so we mm -hmm. thought, oh, ITV are pushing it, that's mm -hmm. great. But it had been really hard to get made, apparently, because mm -hmm. everybody was like, oh, you know, it's really difficult. Will people want to it's watch complex, it? It's complex. That. It's about the law. But actually, you know, this is where drama does its thing. You know, is you it... put yourself in another person's shoes so squarely and, and compacting it into those four episodes seemed to mm. do the trick and it was an extraordinary Mate. experience. And ultimately, of course, what you did is, is you took away the complications and you showed, all of you involved in it, showed the personal yeah. story, particularly of Suzanne, who perhaps hadn't had that before because she wasn't at the forefront of the campaign in Absolutely. the way that Absolutely, and she's was. very happy to be in the background, is Suzanne, but she's such an interesting and fascinating and artistic mm. person in her own right, and she really is the wind beneath his wings. I mean, you get that impression completely when you go to the house and meet them. And I had a wonderful afternoon before we started filming where I was just able to ask her just about her and mm. her amazing life, none of which is on screen, of course, but... I got the impression that it was lovely for her to be able to talk about herself in that way right. for once. Because their lives have been completely taken over by this campaign for so many years. Yeah. And I hope that soon they get some peace and happiness and some time to enjoy together. Yeah. I get the feeling that you're the kind of um, actor who, um, who often becomes emotionally invested in the roles that you play, that you're a very, you're very passionate person, you really care about the issues. You're actually um, about to start a new role in Nottingham, um, a play called um, Punch, where you are playing the mum of a lad who was who was killed um, with... Again, based on real life. Yes, yeah, yeah. absolutely. By one punch audience. in a pub in Nottingham yeah. and uh, dies um, a few days later. And it's the story of your relationship with his killer. 
That's right. That's right. So this happened in 2011 and, and the one punch thing, there is a big campaign. A lot of people will have heard about that, you know, because mm. it happens more often than you think that, you know, just in a brawl on a Saturday night, somebody throws a punch and it kills the person that you're punching. You know, you don't mean to, but that's what happens. Mm. Um, and yes, so Joan, the character that I'm playing, is a, a real person. She's the mother of James Hodgkinson, who, who was killed by Jacob Dunn. Jacob's an extraordinary person who's written a, an amazing memoir mm -hmm. called Right From Wrong. And it's about his journey from having a very, very um, difficult background um, and ending up going to prison for, mm. for killing James. Not for a long time, was no, it? No, it was a very short sentence. It was 30 months because for it was manslaughter, mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, and initially, Joan and David, James's parents, engaged in restorative justice in order to get some answers to the questions. So they met him? Well, it was a very long process, first through letters, because they wanted some answers about why he'd done it. Mm -hmm. And it was absolutely meaningless. It was totally senseless. It was just a fight. He wasn't even there. His friends called him and he came and weighed in and just... And just about a pair of sunglasses punch. or something? Yeah, that's all it was about. It was about nothing at all. And... Um, it was a, a terrible, terrible thing. And what started as that, the, the sort of quest to get answers, turned into something a lot more deep and meaningful. And there was a connection between them. And they started to support and encourage Jacob in him turning his life around. Mm. So he went back to college, did his GCSEs, got A stars, got a degree. And now goes around prisons and schools talking to young people from difficult backgrounds, but also young men in particular about toxic masculinity, about violence. And he's doing chats, isn't he, um, after the uh, the play each night at Nottingham he Playhouse. He is, he is. Will you be joining him for that kind of conversation? I will be there some nights. I mean, obviously, he's you the You need person. a nap as well. Like... You need to get your <laughs> I won't be nothing. I won't be <laughs> It's an amazing thing, and I think it's a very important thing in, in these times, you yes. know, to, uh, to have a conversation about communication and and bridging the divide mm. between people. This, we live in a very divided and mm. binary time, don't we? And mm. anything that's about forgiveness, you know, they, they were both doing a lot of campaigning for the forgiveness mm. projects as well. And it's very difficult for people to understand how mm. somebody could do that, but it has changed Jacob's mm. life. It, it, it answers a lot of questions about our criminal justice mm. system and the way that young people are treated in prison, that there's no... I think Joan and David were both shocked that there'd been no counselling, anger management, no education there. So there's lots... It's oh. a big play. It's written by James Graham. Graham. James wrote Graham. This House and Dear England. Yes, so it, and Sherwood on telling. Julie, you're going to have to come writer. back. Because I feel like we barely touched on the last time we met. There's lots more to do. So, <laughs> <laughs> so lovely to see lovely you to and see congratulations you and good luck. Thank you so much as well. Thank you. And thanks for kind of propelling that post office story forward. You made a massive difference. Yeah. Oh, I'm honoured to be 100%. part of it. Thank you.